Mark and Sadie Rucker from MSU's renowned College of Music are inspiring the next generation of diverse singers through their program called the MSU Vocal Outreach Program. I'm Mark Rucker. I'm a prof- professor of voice at Michigan State University. And this is now my seventh year, and I'm excited to be here. And Sadie, how about you? Um, yes, and I came along with Mark since we were married. <laughs> and and very excited to be here. I I just love MSU. It's uh, it's a, an amazing place, and the the voice department is incredible. Faculty is superb. All uh, pa- uh, professional singers, some are still performing, like my husband is still performing, Jane Bunnell is still support- performing, but they all know what it takes and um, are very attentive to every single student. It's, uh, it's really a very um, individualized, well, individualized um, teaching um, situation anyway, but, but uh, all the faculty is very engaged in, in making, making uh, the students feel comfortable and progress as, as much as they can. So it's been wonderful. And I, um, I play for my husband's studio and then also am coordinator for the outreach program here, which is a new project since we were here, since we've come. Um, Dean Forger, Jim Forger, it was his idea to have this, and it has been wonderful for all of us, not only just to be able to go to these schools and see the incredible work that the teachers, the music teachers do in, these, in the high schools that we've visited and middle schools, and um, I can't even express how dedicated they are. And the students respond, they feel cohesive, they feel belonging to, to a group, and they want to excel, and they have a good time. I mean, this is, this is so important, especially in these, these months and days. Um, and so it's been a wonderful, also for the singers, we have four graduate students that are selected to be part of this project. And they've si- it's a cabaret style. That means it really you really have a chance to sing whatever uh, is chosen. I mean, arias, duets, uh, trios, quartets. And um, it's a great tool for them to be able to perform for a variety of audiences, of, uh, well, especially of high school and middle school age. But we've had others as well. And it, it gets them up on their feet, and they have to sing no matter how they're feeling, you know. And sometimes these are extremely early morning sessions, but they get up and do it. And that's part of what you have to do in the professional world, no matter what happens. Well, Sadie has started to discuss the main reason we're here to talk today, which is the Vocal Arts Outreach Program and inside the College of Music that you two have created. But before we get to that, yeah. tell me a little bit about both of your backgrounds, how you got together, and, and why were you attracted to MSU in the first place? Well, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Pull up a chair. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, how we got together. No, we met actually in college. Uh, I was working on my, my master's degree, and she was already finishing her master's degree. And uh, we both wound up, uh, well, let me put it this way. I wasn't well liked uh by her when we first met. Uh, she had apparently heard some things about me that I didn't know. Uh and uh when we introduced ourselves, she asked me where I was for the last rehearsal that I missed. Uh that went downhill fast. Uh so anyway, but I needed a pianist. Uh and the, and the young lady that I had had originally uh, had graduated. So they said, you know that person that didn't like you, you might want to <laughs> ask her. Uh, so I did. She reluctantly said yes. Uh, and we've been together ever since. Um, she's been my pianist now for well, how many years that is. Uh, and I figured, well, it's better to have her around, so I asked her to marry me instead. <laughs> Cheaper, he thought. So, anyway. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, uh, how we got here uh, is the fault of uh, Professor Jane Bunnell. We, I was performing in Chicago for Nabucco, and I got a call from Jane saying, hey, they're looking for a baritone teacher here at MSU. I said, well, good for them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said, Jane, I'm, I'm working, you know. And she said, I don't care. Come anyway. Well, if you know Jane Bunnell, you know it's really hard to say no to her. 
So, uh, because she would just keep bugging you. Uh, so we drove here, uh, not knowing very much about the school, frankly. Um, I knew that Magic Johnson had gone here. That was pretty much it. Uh, and uh, I knew some of the people that were here. So we came, we saw the campus, and saw, wow, this is really nice. Uh, and we interviewed uh, with uh, Dean Forger, and really liked what he had to say. Uh, we also interviewed with one hell of a music staff uh, led by Mr. Richard Fracker, Professor Richard Fracker, I should say, uh, who is, I use the term genius rarely, but he is truly a genius in the fact that he has kept this, organ this department going as strong as it has been, and it just keeps getting stronger. So it's, it's, it's great. We, we never had a house before. We always had an apartment, which we saw sparingly. Uh, now we have a house, and we have a dog. And, and and our dog is a giant German Shepherd. And he reminds us every day that we need to pay attention to him. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that he is the most important. So this has been truly a, a, a gift that just keeps giving. I, I didn't realize at the time how much I would love teaching, and I truly do now. Uh, because I, because we talked about the fact that our students get so much, well, we get almost as much from them. Uh, and so this has been truly a, a, a experience that I will always remember for the rest of my life. And Mark, will you please tell the story of who Lena McClinn is and how she inspired your love for the arts? Well, Lena McClinn is why I'm singing. Yeah. Uh, Lena McClinn was my high school teacher. Now, in South Side of Chicago. Chicago, thank you. Uh, she is the reason why so many kids in that school are still alive. Um, you may not have been a singer when you finished with her, but you were something. And she gave us the thought that we could be something. So one day... Uh, I was playing saxophone for the band, and, 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 and they said, well, they need a saxophone player in this small group that was playing for her choir. And I said, okay, great. Uh, and I found out that she had been an accompanist for my father, who was a conductor. So I said, great, I'll play in the band. So I took my little saxophone and I went there, and they were, I was off to the side. They were singing a piece called Close to You by the Carpenters. Most of my students don't have a clue who that is. But <laughs> I know it well. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but so we, we, I was sitting there, and I was kind of humming. And all of a sudden, she stopped. She said, come here. And she looked at me, and I grabbed the saxophone. She said, leave the damn saxophone. Come here. And I put the saxophone down, not knowing what she wanted. And she said, sing. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, she, she said, well, we're not leaving here until you sing. This was the last period of the, of the day, and kids wanted to go. Yeah. So I was starting to get these looks. So I sang. They all laughed. I was dejected. I went home. <laughs> I was playing football in the time. I was a halfback. And I went to sign up for football again. They said, I'm sorry, you can't sign up. You failed music theory. I said, I beg your pardon? I said, I had great grades in music theory. What are you talking about? This is a mistake. They said, well, you have to take it up with the teacher. Well, guess who that was? <laughs> so I went to her. I said, Miss McLean, there's been a mistake. They, they won't let me sign up for football because apparently they think I failed music theory. She said, you did. <laughs> I said, that's impossible. She said, no, 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 you failed. Uh, she said, I have a proposition for you, though, because what you can do to remedy this situation is sign up for chorus. I said, that doesn't sound right to me. Um, she said, well, you can do that, and then you'll be fine. I said, but I don't want to sign up for chorus. She said, well, then you won't be playing football. I went to my father, who knew her, and I said, Dad, there's a problem here. This crazy black woman won't leave me alone. <laughs> Please do something. He said, well, you've got a choice. I said, what's that? He says, Join the choir, play football. Don't join the choir, don't play football. At the time, I really seriously thought I could be a football player in, in the in the NFL. So 
I said, okay, fine. I'm going to go and join the choir, but I'm not going to sing a note. Now, mind you, I had sung with my father's choir, but not nothing major. Um, and one day she stood up in front of the choir. She said, he's going to sing at the Met. I had no idea what that was. I thought she was talking about a museum. <laughs> She said, and I said, well, she's just nuts anyway, so don't leave me alone. Uh, I made my debut at the Met in 2004. She was in the front row. And I, it took everything I could not to admit that she was right until that moment. And so she is, she is still alive. Uh, unfortunately, she's starting to succumb from, from age-related things. But uh, she has written more music uh, than almost any other composer I know, and a lot of it's just in her closet that she hasn't had published yet. Uh, she wrote some pieces for me that I've actually recorded, and so my life would never have been the same without her. I love that circle of life story. Mark and Sadie Rucker are my guests on MSU Today from MSU's renowned College of Music. Let's segue into, I imagine... That was the inspiration for you both to start the vocal arts outreach program within the college. Talk about how that came about, and you started to earlier, Sadie, sort of the mission, why you do this, what you hope to accomplish. Well, um, I think that one of the things that has, has happened over the years, when, when Mark has gone to perform for, um, you know, various opera companies, oftentimes they would ask him, would you go to a high school? Would you go to, you know, uh, certain places and sing for the students? And um, that has, he's done that throughout his whole career. So we know the importance of students, young people, hearing a live performer uh, sing opera, basically. And to, to hear them, uh, not in a recording or or any other other way, but live one to one, and, and have that kind of experience, because uh, <laughs> this one little boy, I just remember this. Um, you told me later, he came up to Mark after uh, he had heard heard him sing, and was you know they they all are amazed at the voice and all of that, and he he said, "Can you make a living doing this?" And and so Mark said, "Well." Yeah, so far I've been doing all right. <laughs> but the idea, the idea, this is so out of the experience of uh, most people, right. quite honestly, not just uh, high school kids uh, that that may be in, in, especially in certain areas that, that have never experienced this kind of thing before. The possibility exists, oh, maybe I can do this too. And so there's always been, he's always done this. He's always has, has tried to um, share what his talent and, and his, his singing with, um, with, with younger people. And not just young, but older people, all, all of that, to, to reach, reach people. And that, I think, is the, the main thing that happens. If there is such a thing, talk about a typical visit to a school, what you do, how it goes, some of the reactions you see. Just sort of describe a day okay. at the school. You know. Okay, all right. Well, um, let me go back to how how this happened. Uh, the idea was for uh, designed by uh, Dean Forger. The program was, was uh, designed to have four graduate assistants be part of this, and we would contact various schools mostly for underserved and urban you know and but also there are are uh, suburban and uh, rural schools that that probably would you know, that definitely would benefit from from live performances from from these students um, anyway it's just and I don't think of it as being an outreach uh, in the sense that we just want to show people what we have here at MSU these are the this is the talent this is this is what you'll hear and and then uh the the uh um the program is designed so that it works inside the classroom day so that it's a 40 minute or 60 minute however long they have for their choral program um uh in the in the schools so we go and um we usually there's of course contact beforehand with the teachers and uh, we prepare. We are very, very simple. We use four chairs, and and they're you know they perform um, without costume for the most part. And we it's it's a variety of music. 
it's opera, it's music theater, spirituals, and then the last piece that we have in, involves the students themselves. They join us, so it's it's really it's really a lot of fun. And then after the um, the after the performance, we have a Q and A session, and this is very very interesting because uh, first of all, you the kids are are. Um, Astute, they really are. They they pay it. They really do pay attention, and they ask some interesting questions. Um, they talk about their own anxieties in performing, and so the the uh, the graduate students share that with them how they get over it. Uh, when did they start to get interested in singing, especially um, music like opera? When do you do that? And do you like in some other you know, forms of music and all of that? So it's really a nice exchange after. So it's within the confines of the, um, uh, of the day, of the, the, the uh, school day. And uh, then I usually send out an evaluation survey. Interestingly, they, <laughs> they have some interesting comments. Um, one of the pieces that, that we perform is a quartet from Rigoletto. And um, it's in Italian. All of these things are in original language. Uh, Mark prints out a program with translations and all that so that they follow it. And um, uh, one of the comments was, I didn't think they'd get this, but this one girl said, and this was, I can't, this was the first time we did it. She said, well, you know, um, Jilda found out that her boo was cheating on her, and that's exactly the, the the essence of the quartet. And Mark's going, "What's a boo?" You know. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so I mean, they get it, uh, no matter what language, and we we try to emphasize the communication for the um, for the students with the graduate students that we have. Um, I'm trying to think if there's there's anything we try to go like the first. The first, uh, um, yeah, the first outing we had this year, this past uh, September, was uh, to Traverse City, and so we, you know, early in the morning took the bus up three and and then performed for two schools. But then also we go to Detroit. We go to some of the burbs outside of Detroit. Um, we try to go to other areas as well, you know, and it's um, been an eye opener for me as far as the difference in the school facilities, the differences in the, uh, the number of students that are in chorus. Uh, there has been, there's been a challenge, there was a challenge during COVID because we couldn't go to the schools, but we had enough um, footage, because uh, Mark does the video, I play the piano, but he, he is our driver and our video person, and he also d does the staging for, um, for the, the things that the kids do. Um, <clears throat> we had enough footage that we could do these things virtually with the schools, mm -hmm. and then the, the, um, the singers would then zoom on for the Q&A, and it, was, it worked. I mean, we had, went to, we, we had about 16 each year, you know, because we had two years of this. And uh, we had a, we had about sixteen schools, which was which worked very well because they were looking for other things too, you know. With the it, it was a difficult time for everybody, and we're and I think the schools are just recovering now from that. Uh, there's been a bit of a, a lag of participation and dedication to coming to the uh, coming to chorus and performing, but they're 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 doing it. They're they're coming along, and we we're glad that that we can be part of that. Would you say the main goal is to develop a like an appreciation for the arts, or maybe get them interested to coming to MSU, well, or yeah, both a little of everything? A, it's sort of a dual. There's not situation. as much arts in the schools anymore, unfortunately. Right, yeah. you're filling a void. Well, a lot of time it depends on where you live. Yeah, you know, you were just saying it's a matter of money, and it's a um, also inspiration. And so, if we can reach someone who is never had thought. And this is one of the things where I was going, and I might, like, I forgot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had, um, we, we, we change every two years usually. It depends on who's available. But uh, in the first years, we had um, Jonathan Van Curen, a tenor, wonderful young tenor, and uh, Brian Major, who, no, who just made his Met debut in October, one of Mark's students, and uh, two, two other, you know, two other singers, uh, two sopranos. And but these these two guys are African American, and one of the comments afterwards 
uh, there were some guys, there were African-American guys that were in the audience, and they said, we didn't know African-American men sang opera. Had no idea, had never been exposed to it. And so it's like, okay, well now you know. And this is a possibility. Maybe this is something you'd like to do. Maybe this is a way, another way to make a living. I think it's a, it's a way to show a different world you know, that, that's out there. And so that's part of everybody's educational system. I mean, it's experience, whether, no matter where they are, whether it's urban or suburban or rural or, or you know, whatever, it's just kind of an expansion of experiences. And I think that that's what we like to do. Uh, um, when, when, before we came here, and this is still a program that, that's existing, it's Martina Arroyo, who's an international soprano, has a foundation, or yeah, it's a Martino Arroyo Foundation, that has a prelude program. And this is uh, an experience that's both educational and performance for aspiring singers. And what we would do, you know, I mean, apart from the, um, apart from the performances and the educational experience that they had, uh, we, we would invite um, students to come and see, during, for, for a dress rehearsal, come and see the, uh, see the operas. They loved it. They were from all the boroughs of, in New York. This it was an, a program in New York. And, um, you know, a very diversified group. But they loved it. They cheered, and they're very, you know, I mean, when kids love it, they just, say, they just are so enthusiastic. So that also, you know, sort of crept into the experience that we were able to present for, for, the, for the students, you know, that experience, knowing that you don't know who's out there and how they're going to ex experience that or how they'll re re react to it, but going ahead with it because it's been a positive experience before. Well, and you're both artists yourself. I imagine it's gratifying to see sometimes when that light goes on for a, for someone. Yes, it is. Um, the one thing that that I I am the video person for the group. I, <laughs> and the driver. And the driver. And he drives and the, the driver. van. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, I, I, very I know my place. Uh, <laughs> no, but the one thing that does it does give you a little bit of a chance because I'm doing it from back in the back of the house. When you're on stage to perform it, you don't really get that, you know. But I can see from where I am the student reactions Interesting, yeah. to how this is going. Yeah. And and inevitably it's a really you get to see them go from, I'm really sleepy, I really don't want to be here, to, <laughs> this is not bad. This is pretty good, you know. By the time they get to the end, they're, you know, they're on their feet going, oh, this is great. Um, the one thing that, that I do believe is, aside from attracting students here, which is a, a major goal of the outreach is to get people, and we have actually had people come because of it, which is mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. But we also want to get people who just love the art form. And just understand that this art form exists because without new blood, we don't exist. And I like existing. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, when you don't, when you have young people that all of a sudden get excited about this, that means you have a future audience to come to. So the aside from the fact that we're trying to get kids to come to MSU, which they should. Uh, I am extremely interested in that other part of that. It's just trying to get their interest to maybe they become a doctor and then maybe they become a contributor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they become a lawyer, but maybe they sing in the chorus. You know, uh, it, they don't all have to be, you know, yeah. top singers, right. but they'll be something and they'll be interested in what you're doing. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Well, just. What have we not discussed or just some final thoughts? or What would you like people to know about the program, what you're doing? Well, I was thinking about that. Um, I think that one of the things that has come across, and especially during the time after COVID and, and in when so many, there are so many things out there pulling kids, you know, come this way, come that way. What happens in choirs and in music, music is something that a person can do their whole life, you know, from when they're in elementary school and all throughout, but then later on uh, to enjoy being in a choir or just, just being part of a group that sings. And so it's far, part of belonging. Um, I, and 
they the the kids in not everybody can be sports people or whatever i mean that's great too but there comes a time when maybe you can't play football anymore you can't play basketball anymore or whatever but you can still sing you know and and to be part of a group and make something beautiful together is is fulfilling it gives people purpose and it actually in many ways keeps kids in school uh, this is one of the tragic things when they start eliminating the arts in schools because they think this is a uh, we're an easy target. Let's just put it that way. But that what, what people don't understand is that music is a very intellectual pursuit as well. This is not just emotion and you know you sing whatever you want. It's an intellectual pursuit. It helps develop people as far as their brains go. It helps people. Uh, you have to show up, it, you have to be there, you have to participate, and it gets you ready for what, what happens next. So it's an, it's an integral, should be an integral part of everyone's education. And certainly, you, you must keep it in the school, music, art, theater, even if you, if you had the uh, uh, ability to do it. But mostly music, because as far as choirs go and instrumental music goes, it's, it's a, a fantastic developmental tool. And it's fun, you know, the kids have a great time doing it. The other thing um, that is what we do in the uh, outreach program, we have four people from varied backgrounds. I mean, for example, this year our tenor is um, Tianxi Zhang from China. We have Eleri Mede, who is, she's, you know, she had grew up in Pennsylvania, but originally her family's from Haiti. Uh, Jackie's from Long Island, Jackie Conlon, she's <laughs> our mezzo. And then Gerardo de la Torre is from Monterrey, Mexico. And so during the, uh, one in the programming, I asked them to sing something from their background so that they get to hear s music of other nations and other cultures and, and all of that, which again is sort of a, a broadening uh, educational experience. But um, it's, been, it's been wonderful. I've met, we've met so many terrific teachers and the kids have been marvelous. You know, as Mark said, some of them, they look like, they're, especially at first, like, oh, let me just go to sleep here. But um, eventually they, you know, they become engaged. And then the last, with the last piece, I always ask Mark to come up and, and engage them. He gets them on their feet <laughs> and they are the, they are the chorus for Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat. And I love we, it. we just have a really good time. Yeah. So we want to continue this and we want to continue it everywhere. We've been to, we haven't been, but we've been able to perform for about almost a hundred schools, which is, which I think is really wonderful and love them. Some are repeats and uh, we're hoping to, to branch out and do some more. Uh, these stu these graduate students do have other things to do, like yes. classes. And what has happened, though, in going back to the outreach, is that we have had kids from some of those schools come to MSU to see oh, the yeah, operas. absolutely. Which is something that not a lot of people get to see. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we're very excited about that. She yeah. also, you also, I'm not sure you mentioned it or not, but she, she also sends a study guide to these, to oh, these yeah. places yeah. So, they, so the kids understand I, I remember I, years ago I, I was singing with the New York City Opera and I, I did their uh, <laughs> education tour and uh, <laughs> well when the kids are not prepared you really don't want to be there uh, <laughs> because I mean I know there was a, a situation where a guy was doing the love scene and uh, all you this heard is this is Pagliacci and all you heard from the from the kids was get her, get her, get her. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, cause they don't, they didn't know, they they weren't prepared. You know, when you prepare them, you give them things to read. They understand what's going on. They don't, they don't, their minds don't wander that much. Yeah, you know. And so the the primary people that we're that she's looking for in the outreach are basically choral uh, students. Well, it's vocal music students. Yeah, vocal music yeah. students, mm -hmm. uh, and various stages of how they sing or not but uh and so that's what i wanted to stress yeah yeah we yeah. Pre we try to prepare as as much as possible and uh and listen to the teachers what they need when's the best yeah. time to come i mean it really is a cooperative um uh, venture for for all of us and then i keep in touch with them afterwards i let them know what's going on at the school can you come you know we have tickets for you if you'd like to come and some have which is which is wonderful and we have had students from these schools 
come to MSU and now are part of the music program. So it's it's a uh, it's very exciting. It's very exciting, and it's every every experience has been different, and so that that keeps us on our toes. Let's put it that way, and we hope this continues forever here because I think it's a, a wonderful experience for um, our graduate students as well as the people that we can sing for. And the, the last thing I'd like to, to talk to you about is the outreach uh, is a tool. Uh, that is used to try to get a, get in contact with underrepresented schools. Uh, so you have a lot of, of, of uh, students of color that will see this. Mm-hmm. And I think that has been uh, a plus for the school because now we have more people of color coming. Uh, and so the... the um, I think it was a, a, an ingenious thing by Dean Forger to mm-hmm. set that up. Mm-hmm. And He's so proactive about this. I will say that I don't think they realized who they were hiring to do it <laughs> uh, because they thought, well, it would take a couple of years to get this going. She had it going in about six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's the Vocal Arts Outreach Program inside Michigan State University's world-renowned College of Music, and we've been talking about it with the, the leaders of the program, uh, Mark and Sadie Rucker, a married couple and part of, a, like I said, MSU's uh, renowned College of Music. So I, I, it makes me think how uh, consistent this is with MSU's land-grant mission, really, what you're doing. So thank you for this great work and, and for telling us about it today. Well, thank, thank you. you for the opportunity to do this. We're excited to be here. And we, we hope that we have lots of invitations now to come and, and sing. So, <laughs> And there's more at music.msu.edu. And you might want to check out markrucker.com, too. There's a treasure trove of, yes, of awesome audio a, there. Yes, he has a, um, a recital <laughs> coming a, up in April. Beautiful. So please come. And I'm Russ White.